and welcome back guys so today i wanted to show you a couple of these short and simple games that i came up on um like when i research for the new print and play games sometimes you find the games that are not quite ready uh for a video either they're short or a bit simple or something like that so they don't why justify a whole playthrough video but they're still fun and you know they deserve to be shown so i'm going to show a few of these today um also i wanted to mention um congratulations to alejandro diaz for winning uh my giveaway so very nice uh, build of nine circles that he made pretty much redesigned <laughs> the uh, appearance of the game made it um one card um kind of a game um i'll link the files also if you want to uh, build your own so one playing card fits the whole game on it and you just apply the dice so pretty nice so congratulations to him for winning and um that's all the upkeep i have so let's uh have a look at these games so first one i wanted to show you is called um blorg in the midwest um, so very nice game has a little um, a rule book that you can keep um, so the basic premise is you kind of crashed somewhere in the Midwest um, in the cornfield and you're trying to get um, away from there from Earth pretty much because you're playing like the alien um, the main ba bad guys are the um, FBI that's gonna capture you and uh, do research on you um, so pretty interesting game doesn't have a lot of cards um, so nine cards two-sided um, top and bottom do different things so a lot of a lot of stuff back there um, this is your location where you're located currently so one card here and you begin at the crash site and only thing you have is the memory eraser which you kind of need so um, the mechanic is um, you're supposed to collect certain things for example on this card you'll see a wind condition right here on the bottom so you need the signal and the um, what are they called um, the crop circles crop circles I think that's the word so if you have a signal and the crop circles you win the game so you just have to uh, trigger this uh, space junk barge so how you play the game is uh, you can move to a different location by exchanging your card with a different location card and that's considered uh, one action per your turn so you can only do one uh, you can also get one of the um, items like the keys or the radio but of course you have to be in the right location so if i'm in the barn i can't get the radio because you have to be inside the house or the shed keys are also in the house so um, you can if you if you are in the right location you can just grab um, also when traveling to a location uh, you can also flip because on the bottom of the card it says what the other side is so here it's the shed so if I on the next turn travel to a shed, then I can pick up this radio and keep it here. And so you collect these items and use them to get a different items or, for example, this signal. Um, to create the signal, you need the radio and you also need the battery. And if you have these, then you can make the signal. And if you have the signal and the uh, um, crop circles in the cornfield then you can uh, summon that space um, barge and get out of earth um, what uh, so um, after you play your turn then uh, events will trigger so you'll see the numbers here on the bottom so counting from the left one two three four if the number matches so one two this one matches so this will trigger so it says the farmer's wife comes to hang her washing if you have signal you must scare her away discarding the memory eraser so pretty much you're trying to keep this memory eraser so if anybody sees you you erase their memory and then you can keep playing if you discard the memory eraser you'll probably be caught so you discard a card every time you discard a card it goes on the bottom of the deck and then you keep drawing from the top 
once you draw this, um, that's the policeman. So the card will travel through through the uh, row here at the end, and then we'll get discarded upside down. And then the FBI arrives. And if they go to the um, space number four and get triggered, you get captured. So a very hard game to play because uh, it seems like simple. You have to collect uh, these things. So just go through the deck, collect them. Um, it's not that easy because some of these things are placed so diabolically that you just can't get to them. For example, the uh, um, car battery, you have to get it from a tractor. To get a tractor, you have to get the keys from the house. Uh, once you get a tractor and the battery, um, uh, then you put it, of course, in your, uh, in your uh, um, item. But then you have to get the signal. So for the signal, you have to have the... Uh, um, radio and that battery and of course to win you also have the crop circles but for crop circles you have to get the keys again you have to get the tractor again you have to go to the uh, cornfield to make the crop circle <laughs> so all these things um, are uh, that you need to do before you collect all the items and and of course all these like uh, one item that you need is on one side and the other side has a different thing that you need for something else so like tractor is right here and the radio is right here. So for the signal, you have to do the tractor first two times um, to get that uh, battery before you get the radio. Because if you get the radio first, then you can't get the tractor, you can't get the battery, you can't get the crop circles. So it's all distributed so well that it's, it's a very nice puzzle. So very uh, short, simple game, um, only nine cards. I like the artwork, um, kind of reminds me of the uh, Courage, the Cowardly Dog <laughs> um, cartoon, so yeah, um, quite fun. Um, I don't see a lot of replayability though, because it is, uh, once you figure out, you know, where all the items are and how you have to go about getting them, um, then you pretty much know how to win and then it's just going through the motions. But until then, um, very fun, very good time, so try that. Blor blorg 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 in the midwest all right and second game i wanted to show you it's called the blitz world blitz word sorry it's a um word game obviously so um the whole deck is just um letters and it plays very um uh, it's very simple. Uh, I mean, these are the rules, and then you have some variations on the back. So very easy to uh, learn and uh, quite fun and enjoyable game. I think I, I played so many of this. It's very addicting. Um, so you lay out the grid. Um, you find a word. So you have to connect it um, either orthogonally or diagonally. Um, you try to find the longest word that you can um, it doesn't have to be a word it can also be the first part of a word so um, uh, let's say you can do b b y that works fine you can do a ph that works fine too because that's a beginning of a word so it's not a whole word um, you're trying to do the long as um, the biggest word you can um, and then you try to beat your score. So uh, the shortest word you can do is two letters, um, which which you can do with any any letters. Doesn't matter. You don't even need the vowel. So even if you don't draw any, just do a two letter word. Um, and just um, you're probably gonna need like six letter word to get to a really good score. Um, and once you find a word, you just remove those um, cards, and then you refill them from the deck and then make another word so pretty simple game very fun very addicting so i highly recommend this game um and it's um yeah i'm not doing a video on it because it is uh, a little bit long for well no it's not long but ju you keep doing the same thing over and over so um the video is not justified i mean the rules are explained just with that so just find a word remove the cards replace and that's the whole game so but very fun highly recommend it right the next game i wanted to show you is the gladiator 
gauntlet. So um, this is like a gladiator fight. So this is you as the gladiator. And then they put you against um, some enemies right here um, that you're supposed to defeat. Um, you have to go through uh, up to six rounds, depending on the level of difficulty you're playing with. And if you beat all those enemies, then you win, uh, win the uh, wooden sword, which is your freedom. Um, this game is very interesting, very tactical game. Um, so how it plays, uh, you bring out the uh, opponents, um, you mark their HP right here, and every round has a different uh, formation of enemies. After that you will roll one of the dice to uh, determine the events. So every event, it can be very bad, it can be good for you. So it just depends on the luck of the roll. Um, and you have to adapt to that. So uh, here, uh, what's interesting is this mechanic. So here you have your um, uh, health, your strength. So two dice determine that. Um, once you're fighting the enemy, so you would roll um, the dice. Uh, for example, the enemy's dice are the black yours are white so let's say we have this so you would order um, enemies higher die with your higher die and their lower with your lower and then uh, depending on who wins which set that's how much damage is inflicted so you could lose one right here because of this pair and you put your four down to three uh, enemy would also lose because you want the uh, higher set now, uh, what's interesting is that you can take one of these dice that you roll and replace it with your health die. And now I win both dice and deal more damage. But of course, I just cost myself three HP for that maneuver. Um, also works the other way. So if you have a uh, low uh, HP, you can exchange it for the higher die. That works too. Now I take one damage because I lost this, but I gain five. So, uh, you know, defeating your opponent um, while maintaining some kind of um, HP, because uh, if, if one of these dice goes down to zero, you lose it for good. And then you have to go through all of the five rounds with only one die, which uh, you probably won't be able to do because that, that becomes very difficult. You also have a glory here, so every time you uh, progress around or do some maneuver um, that gives you uh, glory, something spectacular, you increase the glory and then you can spend the glory on tactics, which um, also can, uh, so you can decrease damage, increase your health, um, increase the combat dice, so all kinds of things. So um, a lot of things packed into nine cards. And uh, four of them are right here, so only five are the enemies. So you have the glory, you have the tactics, um, you have these uh, maneuvers with the um, health dice. Um, so a lot of tactical decisions, um, a lot of strategy packed into only nine cards. So most excellent game. Um, and of course going through the nine rounds is um, um, six rounds. Uh, can be difficult on the hard mode and also there is a hard uh, variant um, if that is not <laughs> difficult enough for you so definitely worth a try this game i highly recommend it it's very tactical game and very interesting so definitely give it a shot gladiator gauntlet all right moving away from uh, card games so we have here ambagibus ambagibus or something like that so it's basically a tile lane game. So this game is super old. Um, I, I think it's like at least 10, 12 years old or something like that. So way back in the day, in the dawn of PMP, this is where it came from. Um, right now kind of being forgotten, but back then it's, it was pretty well known and liked. Um, very simple game. So you're basically drawing these tiles and uh, trying to finish this maze. Um, so the key is to finish the maze as soon as you can. So um, you're just trying to um, draw a tile um, and then you just place it and you try to um, tie up all these loose ends. But of course, um, a lot of these tiles kind of branch out, so that's not going to be as easy as it sounds. Um, you do have to 
finish these exits according to the priority numbers. So the ones with a one need to be finished before anything else. And then you can finish the twos. But if you have like one exit, then of course that's where you are gonna play the uh, tile. And that's all you do. So a very relaxing game. So if you're like in the morning drinking coffee, this is the perfect game for that. So just shuffle the tiles and you just lay them out. Um, there is some tactics and um, uh, strategy involved, but uh, you're pretty much kind of bound by the luck of the draw. Because uh, even if you make everything right and you kind of bring the maze down to one exit, you draw a tile that kind of branches it out and now you have two to finish and you keep drawing the... Um, straight tiles or even more branching tiles so um, luck is a huge factor here um, but of course there is decision making tactics um, just enough to keep you interested and as i said the game is very relaxing um, and um, yeah i want to say it's addicting too because yeah i played like <laughs> at least five times in a row um, when i first started with this game so definitely worth a try um, it's only think one page no I might be lying there's there's a bit more um, these tiles are kind of big because once this starts branching out it's uh, it's uh, it gets too big so there are like you can do a smaller tiles um, these ones I really like um, kind of doodly <laughs> um, kind so they're very nice but now these are kind of too small now but I, I mean you can make these a little bit bigger um, and yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, you can do these styles, just don't print them as they are because it's going to be too big. Um, and there's a lot of fan made, um, reskins for that. So definitely give it a shot. I mean, it's worth it. Um, very addicting. So yeah, Ambagibus, I'll leave the links, um, as for every other game. So give it a shot. All right, now let's keep going. So no more cards, no more, uh, tiles. So this is just, uh, sheets of paper from now on so first up we have tombs the sword of valhalla very strange game um it's so this is basically the game up here you have some tables and rules are right here so this is all you need um, also you will need four dice to play the game um, what i like about this game is how the rules are written so the rules are written as a um, diary journal of uh, this like an explorer or archaeologist um, that goes to find this sword of Valhalla in Denmark. Um, so these are the tombs that he's going through or digging through to finally find that sword. And as I said, the rules are written as a um, journal. Uh, what I really like is this line here, Denmark, March 1922, setting up. We have arrived on a remote island of Denmark in setting camp up setting camp up we sourced four dice locally and that's how the rules are written so you basically uh, take four dice and set up and uh, so this game is um, very luck uh, based game but there is a lot of um, strategy you can put into it even so uh, what you have here is uh, you or your team uh, going down the tomb represented by one die with a four on top, I believe. Um, maybe I'm mistaken, but uh, you also have artifact tracks. So you'll have like some artifacts that you find going up. Um, the, also with the die, you have the hex die and you have the fourth die that you roll. And that's all. So you take the four dice, put them on the sheet and you play the game. Uh, basically you roll and you consult the table depending on the rune um, in the room that you're at. So some, ro some rooms are better some not so good um, you can um, manipulate these by spending these points that are on the artifact and once you find the artifacts you can sell them to uh, get more of these points to use on that um, i haven't won this game it's very hard um, but you know like the more i play and the more i figure out how to do things i do better so definitely um, tactical and strategical decisions um, can compensate for the luck, but very luck-based, so keep that in mind. 
uh, while you're playing this game. There we go. Tombs, the Sword of Valhalla. All right, the next game is a Roll and Write, and it was from the last uh, Roll and Write contest on Board Game Geek. I think it was Numero Cinco, and this is the uh, Spellbinders Grimoire. Um, so very nice looking game, as you can tell right away. Um, also very interesting concept. I think I kind of wondered why nobody made a game like this. So basically. Um, you have the numbers on the outside of the circle and this is like kind of a the magic circle that you use to uh, make spells um, pro you've probably seen something like that in um, rpg or something um, so once you roll the dice similar to raging bulls you would connect two dots with a straight line and that would at the end of the game it kind of looks like a magic circle um, i think i have a game finished right here yeah so kind of like that this one doesn't look too magical but uh it, it can be kind of looks like you're trying to um, summon a spirit or something so very interesting game uh, i think this one won second place um as um as the best solo um so yeah very interesting um what i don't like is it's it's very short very short game so the sheet is so um nice looking so once you print it and you play the game in, a, in about 10 minutes, that's it, you're going to need another sheet, so um, definitely you're going to need to either laminate or uh, put it in a sheet protector to play this game. Uh, what's really nice is they have different um, like spells you can activate, so each one requires a different um, element and different amount of the uh, uh, binding strength. So, yeah, you can go through these. Um, it's going to get more and more difficult and definitely interesting game. It's kind of like the um, uh, Raging Bulls, but it doesn't stay overstay its welcome like that game does. So, um, And it has different um, scoring for every kind of element that you use. So it creates a very interesting puzzle. Um, and yeah, very fun for 10 minutes. Not bad at all. So definitely recommend that. The Spellbinders Grimoire. Try it. All right, and last game I wanted to show you today, and this one is from the current Roll and Write contest, uh, the sixth. Um, so this is very new game, less than a week old at this moment. But very interesting. Uh, it's kind of a um, poker squares if you ever play that with the cards, but with the dice um, and, and some other things are of course different. So it's not a, like a copy of that game or anything like that. Uh, so I love poker squares very fun game so I definitely enjoyed this game too very much and it, it kind of feels better to roll the dice instead of flipping the cards and shuffling them um, so it kind of uh, and it also changes a lot of gameplay too so I thought I would just kind of play the same strategy but you can't do that because uh, the dice are um, dice can repeat the same card so basically how you play let me just show that real quick so you will roll the two dice so you have a d12 which will give you the rank of the card so it can be like uh, eight or if a one is rolled then it's going to be an ace um, if uh, 11 it will be jack 12 is a queen and um, there's you can't roll a king but there is a king on the board already um, the other die, the four-sided one, is going to give you the suit of the card. And once you roll a die, you get a card, you put it somewhere in the grid. At the end of the game, you look at the row, see if you have any poker hands. If you do, you score that much. Um, same thing for the column. If you have a poker hand, you score. And also the diagonals. So you try to build as many poker hands going both ways and diagonally and then that's how you score and you try to score as much as possible so similar to uh, poker squares but uh, very different just because the dice can repeat themselves and because of the diagonals and the kings um, if you roll the uh, two of the same card like for example two two of hearts uh, you can't put it in the same row or a column or a diagonal as another uh, two of hearts so you have to you're forced to put it somewhere else where it might not suit you so that changes the gameplay a lot 
Uh, I played this game maybe uh, five times already in the last couple of days. Very enjoyable. Um, yeah, give it a shot. And the contest is also ongoing, so a lot of um, good games already coming in. And if you want to try those and give some feedback of your own and you know, get involved in the process of creating one of these nice games, I'll also leave the link for that. And that's all I, uh, I have for you today. So thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.